Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com and in today's episode of the 10 Minute Gardener we're going to be doing the second of our films on this brand new fruit garden that we're constructing in this old pony paddock. If you're not already subscribed to us at Learn How to Garden there is a link below this video. Hop over there, all it means is you input your email address and that means that we can send you out an email every single time we put up a new film and it gives you access to our monthly newsletters which contain recipes, things we're doing that aren't on the normal website and lots of other interesting stuff. As we pan back now we can see the finished shape of our new fruit and cutting garden. This is rock dust that's been put on the soil so you can see the finished beds. Those that are going to have fruit in are going to be double dug with compost and manure whereas the flower ones will just have this rock dust rotivated into them. So five days after we took those photographs with the beds with the sand on, this is what we have. We've double dug every one of these beds. We've incorporated about four tonnes of really, really well rotted horse manure. And that's into the four central beds and the two end ones. The four beds on the outside edges, they've only had rock dust or granite sand uh, incorporated into them because they're where we're going to be growing our hardy annuals and they don't need as much uh, goodness, as many nutrients as our fruit will. Uh, once I've dug it all over, I've got a rotivator in because there's a lot to sort of do. So I've rotivated the top to break it down. I now need a couple of dry days and I'll just rake this to a fine tilth before I start planting. And when it comes to planting, the first thing I want to try and achieve in here is some height. So in a couple of these central beds, very close to the pond, we're going to get some standard fruit trees, some taller growing fruit trees. But as well as that, the fruit that's incorporated in here, the actual fruit trees, some will be grown as standard, some will be trained. And by trained fruit, I mean you can train fruit into different shapes to encourage it to fruit better or to actually take up a space that um, isn't being used for anything else. And we'll be using fans, which as it sounds like, is like a classic fan, and a spalion. And a spalion basically means a central stem with verticals growing off it. And we'll be growing some of our apples as the spaliers. We'll also be growing something called stepovers. Stepovers are one of those fruits that even the smallest garden can have. And they're exactly what they say. They're going to grow about this high and you'll be able to step over them. The other thing we're going to do in these two beds here, we're going to have some of our cane fruit, raspberries, loganberries, things like that. So I'll be putting up a short film about how to construct an actual um, frame for raspberries. It's not hard, um, but with raspberries, you have to have a frame for summer raspberries because the, the way they grow. And before we go any further, what I want to talk to you about are actual what are referred to as root stocks. It's something when you first get into fruit you'll think what is a root stock and how does it affect what I'm going to do and how do I make my decision on which one I need. To understand root stocks the simplest way to think about it is you don't grow fruit from its seeds or its pips. I mean obviously you can but for instance if you were to plant pear pips uh, or seeds you could be dead and in the ground long before that pear was producing any fruit. And apples could take 25 years before they wanted to produce fruit. So what's happened for a long time now is that we take the apple variety we want and we graft it onto a root stock. And all a root stock is, is what it says. They're the roots. So you take a piece of whatever your fruit variety is and you can graft that onto a variety of root stocks to give you different effects. And the main difference is how vigorously they will grow and how quickly they will fruit. A lot of this research was done obviously for commercial horticulture. And what I'm doing now is I'm standing between two apple trees that were planted about 12, 13 years ago. And they're both in need of their winter pruning, which is going to be done this weekend. But what I want to show you is if we pan out, the one on your left <coughs> is planted on an apple rootstock called M26. This means it'll give you a finished tree that's about three and a half to sort of four and a half, five meters tall. Whereas the apple on your right is actually planted on M106 and that will give you a tree that as you can see is four to five meters tall. They're the same variety of apple and that's the difference the rootstock can make. 
Now there are an awful lot of rootstocks out there, but for most sort of things, with apples, there are three you want to be thinking about. M26 for what are called dwarf pyramids, or the average size garden, which is the one on your left. M106 if you've got poor soil or you've got more space. And there's another one called M27, and that really is for what we were talking about when we are talking about those dwarf step over apples. It's one of the reasons you are better using a specialist like Blackmore Fruit. They can advise you on which ones will be right for you, and they have most of their apple varieties on most of their rootstocks. And it's exactly the same when we come to thinking about pears or plums or cherries. The rootstock can make a massive difference to how quickly that comes into fruit, whatever the fruit is, and how big it is, which is why when I say there is a perfect fruit tree for your garden, no matter how big or small that is, there certainly is. So, you know, that's the basic rule of thumb. I tend to use M106 or M26 for the majority of my planting, uh, and when we come on to the, our planting our pears, our quince, um, and our plums, I'll explain what rootstock I've chosen and why. So that's just a very quick what rootstocks do and why we should be using a specialist like Blackmore. Thanks a lot for watching, and that's Mark at Learn How to Garden saying in the next episode we'll actually start planting up this fruit garden.